Hey, Restoration Church. We are now six days into the Listen and Jump prayer challenge. I hope you are traveling along with us on this journey. If you haven't started with us, remember on the app, you can get access to the prayer that we're working through every morning together, as well as a short instructional video by yours truly. Uh, again, there on the app, you can get that. There are ways to get it. If you're having trouble with that, reach out to us and we can help. If you started this journey and you fell off, by all means, get back on the journey. It's okay. It's never too late to start or to restart. This is not about performance. It's about getting familiar with God. It's about getting familiar with ourselves and the quiet and getting familiar with the quiet itself, that place where we can hear the Lord. Today, I want to rehash something I mentioned in the introductory sermon this last Sunday and add a layer to that as far as advice about what you might be experiencing in your prayer times and what to do with what you're experiencing. The first time people try to pray like this, prayers where there are extended moments of silence or quiet, prayers of listening for God where we don't fill it all up with our own voice, people sometimes fall off or feel like they're failing because in the quiet, their mind will begin to swirl. Lots of thoughts, thoughts about the job, thoughts about the family, thoughts about a TV show, sinful thoughts, crazy thoughts, all kinds of thoughts. And people will think, I'm failing at this. I can't concentrate on the Lord. This is no use. Or they think I'm not doing a good job. Well, when we look at scriptures and we look at the history of the nation of Israel or the history of the church, when people come into the presence of God without fail, the first thing they notice actually are their sins. The things in their life they have yet to hand over to God. The things in their life that they put before God. And it's a part of the healing process. When God comes close to us, we see those things not to be shamed, not to be condemned, but to start the process of being healed of those things. We have a God who neither shames and condemns us for our sins, nor ignores them so that we can just stay in our misery. So, if you've been praying and your thoughts have been swirling on this, that, or the other thing, if it's on overtly sinful things, or maybe you're realizing there's something you put in front of your relationship with the Lord, recognize this. You've done a good job. You've gotten yourself quiet enough that you can hear your own inner noise, your own inner chaos and commotion. And this might be the Lord coming close to you and letting you see what's in there letting you see what's maybe disturbing your relationship with the Lord. If you're running into these things, I wanna say a couple things about what you should do with them. One, don't focus on those thoughts, but don't fight them. They're there, that's fine. If you notice one thought in particular keeps coming back, if it's a sin or if it's something that's a good thing, but it appears it's easier for you to focus on that than on God, then just take the time to confess that to the Lord. Hand it over. Start the healing process. It could be he's letting your mind spin on this so you can begin the process of confession and repentance and healing. The second thing is this. This is what I didn't say in the sermon and I want to build on. This doesn't mean your swirling mind is the voice of God. It is not. And this is especially important if you're having thoughts of shame thoughts of a sense of inadequacy, thoughts of a sense of failure, remembering past sins. You see, the Lord isn't rubbing your nose in these things. It's not the voice of the Lord that's making you feel condemned or shamed or so forth. But many of us walk around shaming ourselves, being brutal with ourselves in our, in our lives. This happened to me. I walked around for years not realizing how in my internal life I was disobeying Christ's command not to judge because I was constantly judging myself. So if when you sit and you get quiet, if you have thoughts of shame or failure or condemnation, recognize two things. One, that's not God's voice. God is not saying those things to you. But two, he is letting you see that maybe, just maybe, you need to start the process of living free in his forgiveness start to pray about those types of swirling thoughts. But whatever your swirling thoughts are, remember, it doesn't mean you're failing. Turn them over to the Lord. They might reveal something to you about yourself to help enable you to walk closer to the Lord. Learn what you need to confess and be patient. This time of getting still and hearing the Lord is a time of healing, but that takes time. 
journey with us through these weeks. Get quiet again and again and again. And if you can, share with us what you're going through. If you're watching this with Restoration Online, you have some encouragement or some experiences you wanna share, leave some comments. If you're struggling especially hard, reach out to one of your pastors. It's great. Whatever you do, I encourage you to walk with us. Be courageous enough to try to get still and listen for the Lord. All right, I will see you all tomorrow at church. I hope you're all blessed. Bye.